time. Jesse James looks good. Wow. And geez, look at that fucking arm, dude. Somebody drug test Jesse James West. Hey, Greg, the set. Uh, okay, thanks, Greg. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm the co-creator of the RP Hypertrophy app and a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx, in New York City, in New York State, in the United States, in North America, in the Western Hemisphere, on planet Earth, in the solar system, in the Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And I forget what cluster of galaxies we're in, but no doubt I'll get to that in the next video. All right, we are here to review the training sensation that is Mr. Jesse James West. And there are only two types of people that are allowed to have three names, serial killers ooh, or outlaws in the West, like Jesse James West, which is, isn't is Scott the video guy, isn't Jesse James like an old outlaw? Except this Jesse James doesn't really shoot guns. He just shoots workouts and handsomeness. Did I say that out loud? Let's say more crazy things out loud. Hit it. This is Hani Rambot, 22-time Olympia winning coach, known for coaching athletes such as Seabum, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, and so many more legends. He touches the guys a lot, which I'm a big fan of. Today, he'll be putting me through his FST7 workout. Let's go. I will say Jesse James has an unbelievable amount of presence energy. Honey's like, Jesus Christ, man. He's like, Rah! I love it. Someone showed up to work. What are you normally doing? So I'm normally doing a press, two side raises, and like two rears, something, something like that. Okay. Okay, so we're training shoulders. Cool. Trying to focus. My, my side delt is definitely my most weak. Side delt's most weak. Most people, when they want the aesthetics of bigger shoulders, are looking for bigger side delts. Bigger rear delts are quite easy to train just with full range of motion pulling movements that you train for your back. Bigger front delts almost entirely handled by pushing work for like chest, shoulders, triceps. Really side delts I maintain are maybe 80% or even 100% of what you should be training when you're training for delts. So we'll see this uh, what this workout has in store. Uh, the technique's generally very good. I would love to see Jesse go considerably lower, touching the inside of the dumbbell to the outside of his shoulder at the bottom and holding for one second. That deep, painful stretch has been shown scientifically and practically to result in more muscle growth. So that would be really, really cool. Other than that, uh, it looks like quite a good shoulder press. Um, yeah. Slow it down a little bit. So Hani said something very important, slow it down a little bit. It's good to slow down that eccentric. The descent under control, it causes a lot more muscle growth stimulus. And because you have to slow it down, you can't use weights that are as heavy. You gotta go lighter. It's even safer that way. Good job. So what we wanna do now, catch your breath. Okay. If you notice you're speaking really, really quickly, your heart rate's really high. He said, if you notice you're speaking really, really quickly, I think Jesse James is just excited to be around Mr. Honey Rambod. Makes sense, the guy turned almost everyone he's ever met pro. And then also get a sip of water. This is really good stuff. You wanna really break between sets because you want maximum energy put into a high quality, ultra effective set. You don't wanna go too fast in the gym. If you're doing it for regular workout, just normal fitness, cool. But if you wanna build some muscle, which is what Honey Rambod specializes in, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to take some breaks between sets, get your breathing back to normal, feel strong again, and then go. Allow yourself to walk around a little bit for a few seconds, get your heart rate down. I'm just so excited, man, but gotta remain Calm. chill. Now let's go ahead and do a standing lateral raise. Show me what you normally do. Just let me see your form. Okay. Well, that's really good. That technique's quite good. That's a slightly different variation. But the nice thing about it is you're not resting here. That's one thing you do not want to do. You don't want to rest here, and he's doing a great job not doing that. Okay, you can totally rest at the bottom. If you rest at the bottom, that rest buys you more repetitions. If you don't rest at the bottom, you can do fewer repetitions, but you accomplish roughly the same amount of muscle growth stimulus. So not resting versus resting is really just personal preference. You can even combine them. You can do as many reps as you can not resting, then come down, rest for a second, and then do a few more reps. So not really any dogma here. Resting at the bottom is totally fine. I'm all about keeping the tension on the muscle, but the tension is what you sum up over the multiple reps. If you put in tension, rest, put in tension, rest, your muscles count the tension that you've put in all to the same piggy banks. You don't have to keep the constant tension all on at the same time. You can pulse it in and that's totally fine. Keep going. Awesome. 
One more, one more, one more. Mm. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose is of touching someone while they're training, unless you're bringing attention to various cues, like if you touch their side out while they're training it, I'm inclined to believe there may be some additional mind-muscle connection benefit, albeit radically small. This like uh, sort of gripping around the waist Titanic bullshit they got going on over here, it's hot and all, and I'm all here for it, but it might not be very, very effective. Um, maybe he's trying to help them out a little bit, but then again, like your reps are your reps, man, in order to really connect with your body, you got to do that shit yourself. I'm a pretty firm believer of that. I'm just, I guess, not sold on the benefits of touching someone uh, without a compelling reason during the workout. Although, if it's Jesse James West that's working out with me, I'm touching him as much as I possibly can. Also with my hands. Hey guys, if you want more uncut, raw, unedited, too hot to share on YouTube version of this, then consider joining our membership for this channel and you get all this crazy stuff, plus a lot more educational content every single week. See you there. You've seen me do the flex sets, right? Yes. So what we're doing is we're creating more time under tension by being able to flex in between sets. Now go into a most muscular crab, like that? Or like wider, this? wider. Get your lats out. There you go. And squeeze and get your hands a little closer to your body. There you go. Mm. Keep that tension on there. We're going to hold that for another 10 seconds. So that definitely puts some tension on the side delts. The problem is, is he's flexing his biceps, triceps, forearms, chest, back, abs, everything. That's a lot of fatigue for something that is doing what exactly to the delts. So by flexing like that your whole body, before you do another set, you're reducing how strong you're gonna be for that set. You're reducing how many reps you're gonna be able to get. And the reps you get for that next set, they're very specifically hypertrophic, muscle growth promoting to the side delts themselves. So you're kind of doing a little bit of whole body stuff. Also isometrically, isometric contractions don't cause reliably as much muscle growth as uh, likely eccentric contractions do or concentric, the ones that you're moving actual weight. So I would say this is like, okay thing to do, but probably makes you a little bit too tired than optimal for your next sets without as much of a trade-off as you'd like to see in the beneficial direction. Nine, eight, seven, Ugh. five, four, good job. Oh. Woo. Stand, stand up straight, stand up straight, catch your right. breath. Jesse James is very impressive looking shoulders. Mm. That was the craziest thing I've ever done. Jesse, that's almost certainly not the craziest thing you've ever done. I've seen your other videos. You've talked to random girls and picked them up out of the street. And by pick up, I don't mean physically lift. I mean emotionally lift. And that to me is a lot crazier than uh, flexing in a gym. Call me crazy. They're FST7 flex sets. Okay, FST7 flex sets. Right. First time ever doing it. What exactly is FST7 training? I created this FST7 training style, which increases the intensity with or without me there. Obviously, it's gonna be a little more intense because I'm actually here, but it's going to help with more of that three-dimensional look. More of the three-dimensional look. Huh. I thought that was just growing muscles, but what do I know? I'm just a professor of exercise and sports science. Because we're doing hyper volume training with high intensity training. That's what FST7 is. Okay. Every kind of training has a volume and an intensity. I don't know if it's completely accurate to say there is such a thing as volume training or such a thing as intensity training. Though you can have training that is of a lower volume but higher relative effort, further beyond failure or to failure. And you can have training that has more volume, more number of sets, but each set is significantly sub-maximal, such that you're stopping three or four reps shy of failure. So to that effect, you could have a more volume biased or relative effort, which is the technical term for intensity biased training. That all being said, the right answer is to give the lifter for that session the correct-ish number of sets to do with uh, a correct relative effort, and then every workout needs to get a little bit harder. Maybe the relative effort climbs every single week, maybe the number of sets stays roughly the same or even increases if that person is recovering. Say seven is kind of an arbitrary number to give someone. I would like someone to start with FSD four and then work their way up over a period of two months to FSD eight. That would be, I think, really, really good. But uh, generally the FSD seven system isn't awful. It has a lot of work. And if you are using good technique and are recovering appropriately, it can definitely work to help you put on muscle. So you're gonna keep your chest up in here. What we're working on is right in here. We're focusing right in the front. 
Again, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the point is of touching someone. Maybe I'm just weird about that. This is a front raise. It's decent. Unfortunately, it's a front raise that biases the shortened position of the delt, which is not the most muscle growth promoting. If you actually turned around completely in that bench, and I'm this is a totally fine variant, but if you're looking for a way to enhance this at home, turn around in the bench and then do the same exercise, but start with your arms way below you and behind you, the big stretch on the front delt is really what grows. Just come up until you're parallel to the ground and come back down. It'll almost certainly rep for rep be at least mildly superior to this version. Again, this is a totally fine version. Just another idea for you guys to try at home. Oh my God. Yeah, good. So I don't think you normally do those. Oh, I, I, that is the first time I've, I've literally ever done those. Okay, I don't think you do front raises at all. I don't do front yeah. raises. Okay, so you need to start doing them. <laughs> yeah. You need to start doing them. I would say the front raise done properly, if you take your pinkies and turn them to the sky and you do a front raise like that, it can actually significantly recruit your side delts, which is good. Front raises with your thumbs up are almost exclusively the front delts. I've never seen anyone's physique be limited by their front delts. Everyone who trains their chest show, and, and triceps in any uh, capacity that's challenging also has to train their front delts. Every pushing movement trains front delts. And I would say front delts basically get trained enough so that front raises, unless you're doing them for side delts and they're front a little bit out to the side with the pinkies up, those are cool. Every other kind of front raise is probably, um, you could use your time better training your side delts more. You heard the man, don't be skipping the front delts, Do okay? Not. Skip the front delts. Everyone was lying to you. Not everyone. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Bent over lateral raises, we're gonna do pinkies up so we can be able to create a better focus on the rear delts. So there's two major techniques, one's with palms down, one's with pinkies up. We're gonna do them both ways so you can be able to see the differences because there's just slightly different nuance to, to that exercise. Ooh, curious. That definitely is an effective exercise. The pinkies up means that your fibers turn into the direction of the movement and it's great stimulus for rear delts, very good. It'll also hit a lot of traps in upper back, which is uh, totally fine. Again, I'm not a big fan of rear delt training because I think if you're doing full range of motion, pull-ups, pull-downs, rows of all kinds, your rear delts are gonna be very, very, very sufficiently trained and then side delts are probably the ROI best thing to train after that. Good job. Keep your chest up, keep your chest up. Good, squeeze those shoulders a bit. There you go. Oh, we're, we're still doing the squeezing thing. I was like, chest up for what? The set is over. Mm -hmm. What do you get when PhD sports scientists collaborate with pro bodybuilders? The most effective muscle growth training app ever made. Get yours now. Slow, give me five seconds on the way down. Five, four, three, two, Good job. Slow eccentrics are great. I'd like to see him push his chest up a little bit more and to finish the rep behind his body to stretch that bicep at the bottom a little bit better. But this is very good. And geez, look at that fucking arm, dude. Somebody drug test Jesse James West. Hey, Greg Doucette. Ah, Mike, what's going on? Ah, can you do a video of Jesse James West is on drugs or not? Ah, uh, okay, thanks, Greg. So we're doing some biceps now. On this one, we're basically doing a hammer using the rope. I always call that the double dildo curl. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Shall I start the Ronnie Coleman impressions now or later? We'll save them for later. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a segue, Mike. <laughs> wow, here we go. This is eight time Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman. Oh my God, he wore the same pants. Jesse James has a lot of energy. If I was Ronnie, I'd be like, uh, what the, what the hell are you doing wearing my pants? That's not cool at all. Mother are you mocking me or something? Lightweight, lightweight, baby. Oh, it's real light, Ron. Hell yeah. What's the saying? Nothing to it but to do it. Nothing to it but to do it. Ain't nothing but a peanut. Woo! I can do it all, folks, all day long. Oh, I'm just trying to stay away from it. I'm just gonna shut the f up, all right. <laughs> nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Hey, 225. So Jesse James, his technique on the bench press was quite good. I would like to see him control the eccentric a little bit more. He was rushing uh, the eccentric, but otherwise very good full range of motion. I will categorically never criticize Ronnie Coleman's technique because there are men and then there are gods. And that's all I'll say about that. Get it. Time to go in, whoop the ass. <laughs> I'm gonna whoop your ass if you don't do this for at least 57,000 reps. 
Good technique. Again, a little too quick on the way down, too quick of a reversal at the bottom. And for some reason, people leave like that half inch or an inch at the top. That inch, that bottom inch, let me tell you, is the most growth promoting part of the movement. I would say slow and control, pause, and then ascent. But uh, definitely like, this is like an A lift uh, technique wise. I'd love to see an A plus. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, this is this is this workout is very intense right now. Uh-oh. Not ideal for five days out. And it feels really good to train. I love training with you, Ron. Yeah, buddy. He literally just gave a yeah, buddy while on his phone. Hold hold up, hold up. Uh oh, yeah, yeah, buddy. Uh, that's right. Goddamn white motherfuckers in my gym. What the hell going on out here? Am I gonna get canceled for that impression? Maybe. It's all love, Mr. Ronnie. Back in the day. <laughs> I like how Jason Yeager's like, yeah, he didn't know who the f I am or what's going on. Would you focus more on barbell or dumbbell? Oh. He's like, yeah, can you get the f out of my face for a second? God damn. Who the f are you? He's like, oh, we're filming an interview. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. Both. What a fucking sweet answer. Both. I had one day was all barbell and one day was all dumbbell. I never use cables or machines. <laughs> I'm going to hell. Damn, Jesse James looks good. Wow. I guess he's five days out of a show or something? Yeah, natural, natural bodybuilding. Oh, natural bodybuilding show. Whew, impressive. I think he did men's physique and bodybuilding. Men's physique and bodybuilding. Wow. Thanks, Scott the Video Guy, you stalker. Anime characters are known for wearing weighted clothes to gain superhuman strength. And today I'm joined by Lean Beef Patty. Oh my God, an old friend of the channel, I guess, though she, like most of her fans, uh, doesn't know that we exist. Hello, darkness, my old friend. To see what it's like to wear them for the next 24 hours. Oh, f that. First competition, we got the rope climb. Let's see who's stronger. Oh! Good God. Houston, we have a major problem. Yo, I can't get up. Yo, rope climbing looks like you're like, yeah, I could do this. It's hard. And there's this weird technique you have to do with your legs and all this other bullshit. That. I would get negative two reps on that rope. There we go. Cross your legs. I need help. Good job. I like how Jesse James figured it out. And then he was like, wait a minute. Okay, I figured it out, but it's still too hard. No, no. You're up there, you gotta do it yourself. This is one of the hardest things I've literally ever done. Meet me in real life, Jesse James, and I'll put you through a hard thing you've never done, but it'll be done with you, not just to you. Boom! Wow. Oh my God. He did it. Folks, anytime you train with a girl, especially a fit girl, your number one priority should be to embarrass her. I'm better at this than you are. Neil. And when she realizes she is physically inferior, she's going to develop an emotion called infatuation with you. That's how pickup works. Short lesson, you're welcome. We're gonna see who can do 100 sit-ups the fastest. Go. Oh. That, I would quit at like three. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't do three sit-ups. One. <sighs> oh shit, lean beef patties all on this motherfucker. This is way more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. I underestimated this. Dude, 100 actual sit-ups is f***ing tough. Which brings me to the thought. People to say, oh, I do 100 sit-ups every five hours. Shut the f*** up. No, you don't. You do those little bullshit pulse crunches, you f***ing liar. I got like five more. <sighs> You're not even struggling. I'm literally sweating. Damn, dude. Lean Beef Patty's just showing off at this point. Doing a little Rocky Balboa action. Too easy. Easy day for Lean Beef. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'll just take the L. Max pull-ups in 60 seconds. This is going to be really hard. I know this is just all for fun, folks, but with that in mind, I'm going to judge the living f out of their pull-up technique. Go, Patty, go, one. Three, wow, four. That's a strong woman. Shit. Oh, the technique's all f As expected. Fatality. Take your time, take your time. Seven. Ooh, that was okay. The, the, the seven he counted when she just started lifting up. I don't think she got anywhere. I don't know how you count a pull-up at the beginning of a rep, but very well. Okay, come on, Patty. Eight. Patty, go, go, go. Up. Nine. Oof. Ugh. <laughs> was that, that, that 12? Yeah. Patty, going for it. <laughs> Her celebrations really put me down right now. Yeah, a lot of fun. Kids having fun. All right. You wanted this fight. I, I wanted this. You asked for this. I asked for this. <laughs> My body weight plus this on the bar. Yes. Damn, so that's like an extra like 100 pounds. Pretty much. Damn. And we're gonna see who can do the most it's reps. Be a PR. 
It is not easy, and I am actually terrified of getting hurt. Oh, why is it so heavy? There you go. I haven't squatted in a long time. All right, so lean beef patty plus 100 pounds weighs 132 pounds? This will warm up. Oh, we're just warming up. I'm being a dick early. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie, it's way harder. Five. <sighs> wow, six. You're feeling a little uneven. <sighs> Why are you trying to get in my head, Patty? <sighs> it's encouragement. Seven. <sighs> wow, oh my gosh, eight. Does it be careful? Do you guys also hate it when the video guys don't give you an angle or time frame in which to judge squat depth and technique? Looking at it from the front, kind of skipping the bottom part a little bit with the with the camera. I just can't tell if these are good high quality reps. I want to judge, damn it, but I can't. I need raw material for judging. Nice. That did not look sufficiently deep. I would count that as a zero. I hate squats. Is that still a warm up? Come on, ready, up. That, that, that is a half squat. I'm a cocksucker, I know. All right, so. Jesse James on the lifting, uh, 8.5 out of 10. Generally very good range of motion, very good control. I'd love to see a little bit of a slowdown on the eccentric and a little bit of a pause at the bottom for stuff. Um, we won't talk about the squat and pull up stuff. That was all just for lols. And uh, on personality and just being an invigorated young man, a 15 out of 14.5. Am I a fitfluencer yet? See you guys next time.